battle. Commentators here. All right. So, looks like the like Seagull is definitely getting kind of washed. <laughs> go, as I get on the mic, I'm sorry, I'm completely unaware of what was happening uh, prior to this, but Moko has definitely been one of the up and comers in the region for quite some time now. Kid's kind of nasty. And um, for those who don't know, ZD has gone on record saying that you wouldn't be surprised if Moko got better than him in a very short span of time. Like, you could very well see the Meteor rise, but hey, he's riding into the blast zone. Very great explosive flame from Sequel Joe. Catching the landing. That's actually kind of hard to do against a character like Fox, who has, like, who's really, like, falls super fast. You can mix up the timing as a result of his fast, fast all speed. All right, fortunately going for another explosive flame there. Moko with a very nice punish. Ooh, goes for a lead trap. Got some ideas. Wow, he went all the way down there. It looks like he missed the, <laughs> he missed, uh, missed, misspaced himself in terms of trying to land on the ledge and get that, or land on the stage and get that uh, ledge trap. Regardless, gonna find his footing again. Seagull having a really hard time getting back down. Backer almost does it, and he, oh, I think that was an accident. Yeah, he, he, he burned his jump already, so it looked like he tended to do a, uh, high, a high teleport, but did not quite get it. Close to what he said, and now Moko is going to take as much opportunity to get as much damage as he can, extend the lead further. Moko's angles also, the way he does the recovery is very effective. Usually Fox is a character that has a... Typically, once he's forced to use Firefox, it's kind of an easy catch on him. But, um, see, look at that right there. That's an example. He ain't, he moves, he has an, a perfect angle so that he can't, he doesn't get too framed as easily. So that he can evade that down air from Seagull Joe. Impressive play. Seriously. Seagull trying to find his way back on stage. Get the last, very last hit of the up air. That'll connect on the side. Hitbox on that is pretty interesting. It's kind of like the rainbow around Palutena. An invisible rainbow. Here's a ledge trap from, from Moko. Oh, wow. Almost got... Oh, it looked like he was going for a parry on the last hit into maybe Nut Smash. Almost, but not quite. Gets a back air there. No jump on Seagull. That will seal the deal. Small blast zones of Town and City. Working in his advance there. Mission complete. Dang. Yeah, this, this guy, Moko, has been so impressive for such a long time. Like, for the past, uh, this isn't even just a recent thing. More Like, this is like a past half a year thing. Like, throughout 2022 type of thing. Moko's kind of shown out. I believe, like, I don't know if I'm mistaken or not, but he definitely did have uh, a pretty decent performance at um, some of the recent tournaments. Like, he, um, like I think maybe getting a break, breaking in the top 64, perhaps. I remember seeing something along those lines of uh, Pound. So yeah, definitely an up-and-coming player. And we have Seagull, ooh, going with the Wolf. All right, the counter pick to FD. Maybe he wants to play a little more of a scrappy game, but I don't know if you can do that with Moko, because look at the way this guy is just capitalizing off of every... Bro, one touch from, from Moko turns into 79%. And now you're suddenly a kill percent. And now you cannot make another mistake. Oh, tries to go for a call out on the up smash. Seagull gonna make the most of that whiff. All right, nice job from Seagull Joe. Cool thing about this matchup is that if you're um, Wolf in terms of the counter pick with uh, away from Pal Palutena, you absolutely have an easier time killing against a character like Fox. You have kill confirms that are very solid, whereas uh, Palutena, 
very much a character that focuses on kind of stifling your options, but with a character like Fox, you have so many different ways to move around that you don't really get the choice to be able to just do that. And now here we go. Oh! Gets the tech, get that tech chase accurately. Get a, gets a very light punish, though. Oh, another great angle from Moko, being able to not get hit by the down smash, but another well-placed back air from Seagull will go ahead and finish off the stop. 146, he is a back air kill percent. Moko's definitely looking for it. Not quite going to find it. Oh, oh, almost right over his head. That, that, that clipped him in his ears. Hmm. Now, no, this is just kind of a situation where it's difficult for Moko. Historically, he always has a hard time once they get to this percentage where it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a rough percentage where... Oh, wow, that shot was nice. They're not going to net a stock off of it. It's a percentage where Fox's kill confirms no longer true combo, and you have to get a raw hit. But really, all you have to work with is just that back air in terms of killing. Another great angle. Not going to die to that rage down smash. Max rage down smash. That would absolutely terminate Fox off the side of this percent. Seagull has been making a lot, a lot of mileage off of this stock as he looks at 213%. Wow, the, it's the snow. The, for, the forward smash to cover the ledge get up, or the ledge jump. Oh, wow. Seagull definitely looking a lot more polished. Ah, got Moko going for another genius mangle, but not going to quite get the distance he needs at that position. Maybe he fell a little bit closer to the stage before starting, then absolutely probably going to have a better chance, but he fell a little too far down. And now here's a potential jab punish. Not quite. He's going to let go of the shield a little bit too early. Here comes Moko getting a lot of damage. Again, like, you just, like his, punish, his punish game is so legit. The crazy thing is, even if it's not a true combo, he'll still make the most out of you trying to get out of the combo, trying to get back down to the stage. And he'll extend it even further to get even more damage. That's why you see Moko just racking up so much damage off of a single hit against any of his opponents. Seagull looks like he's fighting to get this stock and finish off the game, but I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't count Moko out even if he is a whole stock down. All right, both players still playing. Very much a nickel and dime type of game. Oh, that rip, that was a very raw up smash from Seagull. Trying to look, look like he was trying to call out a landing of some sort, but the anti-air will not work and he'll whiff and get punished. Here comes Moko, potentially able to make this comeback and be able to seal out the game. 2-0, quick seal out the set 2-0. We'll see how that goes. See, he is very much a kill percent. Okay, yeah, great, great cop coverage off that option. Like, he, he read the, he, he was able to cover the ledge roll really, very effectively, get some good damage. I think Moko still needs to win in about, he wins in about three more touches. But Seagull, he's won a clean up air away. He's looking for it. He's won back air away. But Moko, he's, he's, he's just gradually adding up the percentage. And now he's up. This is there. Oh, up from across the stage. That sets sweet spot on the back air. That rising back air was very effective from Seagull. It was looking super scary. And Seagull's been playing since Brawl. Very seasoned player. Definitely has some, he has ability to maintain composure under pressure. And a lot of players, an unseasoned player would probably crack under the prospect of having an opponent about to come back on you in terms of being able to just suddenly make a comeback. Randomly be able to just get a, a bunch of damage and now all of a sudden he's at 77% against Max Rage Fox. Very scary. <laughs> like you're at near up smash percent at that, at that point. But um, regardless, Seagull's able to clutch out. Excellent job. Stop the battle. Whoa. All right, here we go. Game three. The Seagull Wolf is definitely sticking out. I mentioned he's been playing this game since Brawl, and absolutely we've seen this fella. <laughs> if, if, you, if you've been around long, if you know what character you play in Brawl, Wolf. When his game first dropped, he was actually a Wolf main, but um, went over to Palutena. And clearly going back to his roots is paying off as we go into this game three. Because that, that first game was kind of convincing for most of us. Very strong performance from Sequel Joe going into this last game of the set. Oh. Both players still playing a very. I think Moko, he's kind of dictating the pace to an extent. With ha Again, that fast movement speed of Fox, he can very much play a hit and run play style. Kind of hard to pin him down in certain points, and they're really hard to put him down there. Get the whip punish, get some good damage off of it, but not the usual Moko amount.
Ooh. Oh, nice! Covering the air dodge! Reacting to the directional air dodge. Wow. Impressive performance from Moko, but Siegel not going to let it extend into anything more than just a sock taken and even the game up with that smooth connect on the hit. And now the defense have been relatively even throughout this entire time. That's what here we go. Moko with a great double jump call out. Gets an up air. Able to get some more damage off of this. Once, the thing is, what, the, the important thing is once Siegel gets hit once, even if he's not getting true combo anymore, he's still on his back foot. He's still kind of forced to play around trying not to, uh, trying to uh, relieve himself of the pressure that Moko's putting on him with all these rush down tactics. Oh my God, if he, if he, if he fell into him, he could have four, four air back here. Wolf is a super intimidating character, but Moko's certainly keeping up. Matter of fact, he's got a lead. Oh, oh, wow, he actually, oh my goodness, he actually got the down at that time. Usually Moko's able to get away with that angle and, and evade getting those down, evade those down smashes that Wolf is able to put out. We see him when he's playing at ZD and Dexter, he's able to do that. But at this stage with the wall as it is, you can't really do that as easily, but he gets a down smash of his own on that one and is able to even up the game. Last stop for both players in his final game of the set. Moko playing a very jump-based play style now. We see him go, trying to go for some falling airs, falling down airs, going for some rising forward airs to try and catch Siegel's jump, but Siegel's still playing pretty close to the ground. Okay. Siegel with a very good percentage lead that will instantly evaporate the moment that Moko's able to get that hit. Now it's dead even in terms of percent. Spots being a little bit lighter. Cool, not getting a lot lighter. One of the lightest characters in the game. Oh, nice. Another jump call out from Moko. Oh, man. He's stifling him in the corner. And now this is it. Will he get a legend? This could be a back air. Oh, my goodness. I love that he went for the down smash in case his legend only be a vulnerability wore out. Down smash. Not quite going to connect. That down smash is so clutch from Moko, from Moko potentially, in case the legend vulnerability ran out and Seagull decided to keep hanging. Both players at last hit. But at the, we're getting that percent where Fox's confirms will stop working. Moko's gonna have to work real hard with this kill. And now he's about dead to anything. Up air is what Teagle's looking for. He's not giving too much away. Gets a sweet spot on the down air. And he gets caught DIing out trying to dash back. And that is going to be.